Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Divan and the topic of the lecture today is trichinolosis. In this lecture, we're going to talk about what trichinolosis is, what is it caused by, what is its pathogenesis, how do we diagnose it and what are the treatment modalities we have available. First of all, we're going to talk about what trichinella is, what does it look like, why do we call it roundworms and what's the significance of its uh, appearance and why different sizes of uh, trichinella are seen under the microscope. Next on we're going to talk about the life cycle of trichinellosis or trichinella in which we're going to talk about two different life cycle in which sylvatic life cycle is there in which the predation and scavenging comes through and then we're going to talk about the domestic cycle in which meat scraps and cannibalism will come through. Then we're going to talk about third life cycle which happens most pre uh, more predominantly in the humans in which we get this entry into our entire system and then this larval migration and getting into a, the adult form and coming back into the intestine and causing this infestation. So we're going to talk about these three life cycles here. Next on we're going to talk about the pathogenesis of it. We're going to talk about how the larval migration or how the presence of lava in your body will affect your CNS system. We're going to talk about how lava will migrate and cause diffuse lien. We're going to talk about how vessels are obstructed. We're going to talk about how our own body is affecting the affecting and leading to vascular damage, and that will in turn lead to CNS involvement. We're going to talk about why those patients which are suffering from CNS involvement more more predominantly, 16 to 20 percent of them die because of it. Next on, we're going to talk about the clinical features of larval migration. We're going to talk about when lava migrate to your blood what happens when lava migrate to your eyes what happens when lava migrate to your uh, conjunctiva and retina what happens when, when it moves to your skin these are the skin manifestations when it goes to your head what clinical features will come through when it goes to your lungs what clinical features will come through and if it goes to your heart what will you feel and what uh, are the clinical major symptoms that will coming through your heart Next on, we have these clinical features in which larval insistment in the muscle will be seen. Basically, we talk to, we'll talk about first target organ for these larvas are going to be your muscles. So what three clinical features will come through your muscles? We're going to talk about that. Next on, we'll talk about what laboratory findings and diagnosis will be. We're going to talk about what findings will we be looking for to confirm our diagnosis. Next on, we're going to talk about what will we see in the histopathological section of that biopsy we took from the muscle and we're going to talk about why it's there and how it's there. Then we're going to talk about different treatment modalities we have for this infection, this infestation in which there's a mild category, moderate category and severe category and we're going to talk about how to treat them and what are the precautionary measures we have to take afterwards. So watching this complete lectures and the variety of lectures uh, there are thousands of other lectures varying from anatomy, physiology, pathology, medicine, pharmacology, surgery. Uh, you can subscribe to scardia.com. It contains a free trial for you so that you can get accommodated. So thank you for watching scardia.com.